Well, government will provide 4,200 GPS trackers to Sri Lankan authorities to monitor fishing boats, which may be used by people smugglers to bring asylum seekers to Australia. This all formed part of Claire O'Neill's trip to Sri Lanka this week. And joining us live now is the Shadow Home Affairs Minister, Karen Andrews. Karen, uh, thanks for your time again this morning. So, as we just mentioned there, those GPS trackers um, will be helped on fishing boats. Australia to also pledge some $50 million in aid to Sri Lanka. I'll just start off with your thoughts on Claire O'Neill's trip. Look, I think it was a very good idea for the Home Affairs Minister, Claire O'Neill, to go to uh, Sri Lanka. It's a very important relationship that we have between Australia and Sri Lanka, and we need to maintain that. So as Home Affairs Minister myself, I visited Sri Lanka in December last year, and I did that because of the need to make sure that we had in place a whole range of things that were going to go to protect our border. And, of course, we've worked very closely with Sri Lanka for a number of years. So I think it was absolutely the right thing for Claire O'Neill to do to go to uh, Sri Lanka. They have, um, they have a massive issue now for... The Labor government has a massive issue that they have to deal with uh, now, which is the, the start-up of boats coming to Australia. So the relationship with Sri Lanka and the ability to return people to Sri Lanka is incredibly important. Well, as you pointed out, Sri Lanka is experiencing its worst economic crisis in 70 years. It stands to reason, then, that more boats will come. So what more can be done or should be done? Look, I, I, without a doubt, Sri Lanka is going through some very difficult uh, times at the moment. But there are difficult times right across the world. And that's why it was so important that the coalition put in place exactly the right measures to make sure that boats weren't coming to Australia. So uh, it is important that Operation Sovereign Borders is maintained. Now, that means that temporary protection visas have to remain in place. It is a massive signal to the people smugglers to even suggest that those are going to, to go. And that's, that's the policy that Labor yeah. took to the election. So they need to stop that. Uh, now, it is really important. It is a key pillar of Operation Sovereign Borders. And quite frankly, uh, Labor can't say that things haven't changed when they've made it very clear pre-election that they will stop temporary protection visas. Yeah. On top of the boats there, I mean, are we seeing, and, and, and did you see this in the latter stages of your time as Home Affairs Minister, more people arriving, not by boat, but by plane? Look, that has always been uh, an, an issue. So, yes, we concentrate very much on people coming here from... from uh, Sri Lanka, coming from Indonesia and, Indonesia and potentially other places. And the biggest risk with that is the deaths at sea. Uh, not just the, 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 the men, many of whom have died as a single males coming to Australia, but women mm. and children are dying as, uh, as well. So that is one of the most significant issues with boats coming into Australia. So we concentrated very heavily on uh, dealing with that issue because, and I was, I was very, very clear about it in my time as Home Affairs Minister, I did not want people dying at sea. So we yeah. focused on that. But clearly there is an issue with people who are arriving here right. by plane. We, we, um, we need migration. We need to boost numbers. Would you be open at all to an increase in the numbers, legal numbers from Sri Lanka? It kind of helps them out and helps us out too. Look, I think that the, there's an opportunity for us to look particularly at skilled migrants and how we bring uh, people to the country in the areas that we need them to be. So there's a number of classifications where we know that we need uh, workers here in Australia. Some of those are hospitality, tourism, but also in the IT professionals we need to be bringing here into the country. Absolutely, uh, we should be looking at where we're going to draw these people from and get these people to move legally to Australia. And we should be welcoming them with open arms but there is a channel, there is a way for these people to come here uh, legally and not to risk their lives. Yeah. Tony Burke has followed the RBA's lead and accepted that workers may actually need to take a pay cut to prevent higher inflation from becoming entrenched. What are your thoughts on his comments? Well, I, I, I wish that Labor had been a lot more circumspect about the risks to inflation with the policies that they took to the election. But uh, we are where we are now. There's been a decision that's been handed down by the Fair Work uh, Commission. But we have to be very conscious as a, a country that uh, things are very tough out there. We're not immune to what is happening globally at all. So we have to be very mindful of the risks of us going into recession, of there uh, to be a spiral of wage increases, 
listeners are here. Now, without a doubt, some people are really struggling very hard at the moment. Cost of living is increasing. They're going to be hit with a whole range of things. Electricity prices, fuel yep. prices are so high at the at, at the moment. But a wage spiral is something that our businesses cannot afford. And if our yep. businesses start to collapse, then there's not going to be work for people. Well, the ACTU still, despite all that, still pushing for five to six percent pay rises. Look, uh, and, and I suppose that's their job as uh, as a, the peak union body to, to do that. But I would like to see the ACTU also work closely with businesses because it's all well and good to argue for higher pay and conditions. And we do want to make sure that we are a country that is providing high wages and conditions to, to people. But the balance has to be there, which is that if we force up wages and conditions, then businesses are going to have to look at what they have to, what they can do and what they have to do to make sure that there's ongoing employment. Now, many businesses will pass those costs under uh, onto consumers. And of course, as that happens, cost of living increases. So it is an incredible spiral. And yes, we need to have appropriate standards for wages and conditions, but we also need to make sure that there are employment opportunities for people and you can't do one without the other. Uh, just a final one, uh, IEMO will end its intervention of the market. That allows uh, it to set the price again. Still two more months of winter, though. Are you convinced at all that the underlying problems aren't there anymore? Look, I don't think the, the problems have gone away by any stretch. We still face some significant issues with uh, energy reliability and, of course, the, the pricing. Now, I've said for a very long time that we need to look at extending the life of coal-fired yeah. power stations. They are an important part of our energy uh, mix. I know that there are discussions happening about uh, nuclear, and I think that it's time to make sure that businesses are actively engaged in the nuclear debate to see what their interest levels are in the modular reactors that they might be able to run for our big high consumers of energy. That takes a lot. That would take a long time to get going, though. I mean, more short term, is it? Has the damage been done when it comes to coal? Because you know they've mm. taken it upon themselves to to finish up early, to put it simply. Well. I think that most Australians have, have demonstrated a very strong interest in renewables and moving towards a different mix in our energy supply. Uh, but it is going to take time to get there and that's why it's important that the work that was done by Angus Taylor when he released the uh, energy roadmap is continued because that actually set out some pretty strong pathways for us to consider to make sure that we had the reliability of energy that we needed. So that work clearly needs to continue but we can't can't just have a short-term solution. So we can't say the current crisis is over, isn't that great, and let's just move on. We've actually got to look at how we are putting in place the things that are needed for the short, medium and the long term. Mm. OK, Karen Andrews, uh, thanks as always for your time.